I have another stove I want to share with you today. This time it is the Fire Tower by the company By Arnaud out of Belgium. If you're interested in hearing about my experiences with this stove, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, I want to thank Arnaud of By Arnaud for sending me the Fire Tower so that I could share it with you. So this is Arnaud's second stove that he has come up with. Arnaud is a designer and an engineer. His first one is known as the Combius. Combius? I'm not quite sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but we'll of course put it on the screens and there will be links to that stove in the video description below. I don't have that stove yet. I'm hoping to be able to get one at some point to be able to test and bring back to you. And what drew my interest to that original stove is that it is trying to combine or does combine both the rocket tower design as long with a wood gas design. So if it works out the way it's designed to, it should be a very interesting stove. This one is a little bit different. This one is a rocket stove that is collapsible. Kind of small compared to a lot of the rocket stoves that I've shared, but this one is collapsible. So what I thought I would do is take it apart, show you how it goes together, talk about the physical attributes and specifications for this, and then of course we'll get a fire going in it and demonstrate how well it works. So this is how the stove arrived to me, a nice little zippered nylon bag. Inside are all the components for the stove. They are arranged in a series of pockets on both sides. I'll point this out now. This is the manual that came with the stove, which is pictorial and does help you uh, put the stove together. So the primary components of the stove, and I'll go through each of them one at a time. First off is the tower or body of the stove. As you can see, it folds up flat like this open and it is a four-sided design. I just want to show you the inside of this now. Now it's quite dirty because I, I used it even this morning when I got here to make my first cup of coffee, but it has a drop down fire plate and that will drop into position once I get the pin through the fourth side. I want to point this out now and show you this. As you can see, it is a very wide open, plenty of airflow through the fire grate and in the center of the fire Great is a slot. I'm showing you that now because that will mate up with another uh, ramp that will go in through the feed ramp just to kind of hold it in place. So folding that back, I'll fold the sides over, remove the pin. The pin runs full length through the uh, series of holes down the side. So you do need to start it at the top. I want to make sure that I can both do this and show you at the same time. So you can see how it was going to run down through the holes down the sides, a little bit of fiddling to get it in place there. It's all in place. Now I can open this up and you can see how the tower is starting to take shape. The fire ramp or the fire grate dropped down here. On the fire grate on either corner are two little portions that are bent over. They're intended to grab onto this lip right here. I, I will tell you from use already there is some warping taking place and you may have to on occasion, bend it back into place to make sure it grips. If it doesn't grip, it's not the end of the world. It's still going to work for you. It's This is just one of those little things about this stove that I would like to see improved. I'll mention them as I go along, is that this does not hold on well. It does get better when I attach the next component to it. And that next component is the actual feed ramp. So let me bring that out. So here is the feed ramp. Again, it also folds. Now, the feed ramp is going to slide onto the front of the tower. That's just a little uh, lip that we'll talk about later, a little cover, half cover, I guess is what you actually want to call it. On the sides of this feed ramp are folded uh, guidelines down each side, and those are going to match up with slots on either side of the wide open. So to do this, you do have to kind of pay attention, look slowly, and then slide it. Well, didn't miss it that time. Takes a second, takes a, maybe a little bit of practice to get into place, but once you have done it a few times, then it goes into place. You can see it's getting much sturdier as we go along. Now, fold the uh, flap over. Here's another portion of the feed ramp, and this feed ramp will go down inside this part of the feed ramp, and you can see that there is a bar running through here. And if you notice, it is exactly the same width as that slot is in the main fire grate. So when I run this down, they will catch to each other and hold it in place. Plus that little bar slides into notches on either side. So what we have here is a feed ramp where air can travel underneath while the wood slides down inside here. So that's very much traditional in terms of fire or of uh, rocket stove design. 
Only thing left now is a set of crossbars for the top. Let me get those out of the bag here. Or two things, actually. First here are the pot stands. The pot stands go together like this. They're well-designed pot stands, skeletonized, very minimal in their design. And they have the uh, various step heights so that the smaller pot will sit in the middle, the larger pot sit further out and higher off at the top of the stove, allowing for more airflow that the larger pots would otherwise reduce. That's going to go in at an angle, catch into the four corners like that. Put that ramp back in. And the last thing is an ash pan, because as we mentioned, it's a wide open fire grate on the bottom. So here's the ash pan that everything would sit on. Now, if you didn't want to carry the ash pan, you wouldn't have to. Um, but then again, you would have to be careful about what type of a surface you're going to use it on. I find not only does it protect the surface underneath, but it also prevents moisture from being drawn up into the stove. And it aids in the lighting of the stove, as you'll see in a few minutes time, because uh, the way th that I have found that is best to like this is to place a fire starter on the ash pan, place a preloaded stove on top of that, and it'll catch up through the stove. Okay, so let's go through a, a few specifications for the fire tower. So to start with, the height overall from top to bottom is 8.15 inches, which is 20.7 centimeters. The width at the base is 3.9 inches, which is 10 centimeters, with the width at the top being 2.12 two inches which is 5.4 centimeters and with the feed ramp the width the attached um, you get a, a length inwards of 6.3 inches 16 centimeters with the pot stands 6.7 inches 17 centimeters weight all in and here's what, what you're really looking for one pound 1.9 ounces or 508 grams now as I said you can remove the ash pan if you want to save a little bit of weight but it does have a real benefit uh, to having it there. Um, it is a bit heavy for the size of it, but the gauge of the stainless steel is quite heavy as well. I've found that there's been no warping to any of the primary components at all, with the exception of down where I showed you that first piece, the, the um, uh, fire grate catches on. A little bit of warping takes place there. The ash pan has the tiniest, tiniest bit of warp to it, but nothing that impairs its functions. Everything goes together the way it's supposed to. Now, there is uh, a few design changes that are going to happen between the stove that I have and the production stove that you will receive if you decide to buy one. I'll talk about those as we go along. All right, so what I thought I would do right now is set it up with some wood inside of it and get a fire going and show you just how well this thing draws air and creates a true rocket stove type effect. Okay, so I preloaded the stove with some sticks. I'll just show you that down through the top here. Uh, just a couple points here. Try and use sticks that are less, not as tall as the top of the stove because you still need a little room for the pot stands to go in and not so narrow that they fall through underneath as, as some of mine are starting to do. They're falling through onto the ash pan. So you don't need tiny, tiny sticks. Now, once you get the fire started, you can add all the small sticks you want around the pot stand. Put the pot stand on now, which is exactly what I'm going to do because it's a lot easier to put it on before you get the fire started because sometimes the sticks are in the way. You have to kind of manipulate them out of the way. There we go. All right, so now my fire or my pot stand is in position. All right, so to light this up, as I mentioned, the way that I found is best is to lay the ash pan down, put a fire starter on there. In this case, I'm going to be using a ProCamp Tech uh, fire plug, light the fire starter. They always light up pretty quick, but I want to give it a second or two to make sure that it's really going to get going. Are you going? Yep, it's going. Now, once that has started caught on just a little bit, then I'm going to place the stove on top of it and then let the fire work its way up through. Now, it's going to take a few minutes for this to work. So we'll watch it for a second. And maybe what I'll do is... Um, I will speed up this portion of it, but I'll tell you, it is pretty fast, just the same. I'm going to flip the cover over for now, so that preferentially draws air in underneath the feed port. We won't be using the feed port for a little while yet at that point, uh, when the fire has well established itself. 
and starting to go through the fuel that I preloaded, that's when I'll start feeding sticks in through the feed port. And here's what's nice about doing that. You can use some nice long sticks. Whatever you can get in here through the chamber will go into the feed port and you just progressively move them in as you need to. And not only would you have less fuel processing to do when you do it this way, but at the same time, uh, you get to control the amount of fuel that's in the firebox itself and burning, so you get to control the amount of heat. Now, that's starting to catch on. Flames are already climbing to the very top of the stove. You may be able to see some of them starting to uh, show above the top of the stove. You will certainly in a minute. And as it does so, I just want to point out, the wood that I'm using is literally well, it's these sticks. I picked them just up off of the forest floor here. I looked around for some dry ones, but they're a snap, but uh, they could be drier. But the point being with a stove like this is that you want to be able to use found wood. You don't want to have to do a whole lot of, of wood processing to get it working. So you should be able to use found wood off of the forest floor to make this operate. Now, what often happens, of course, is the wood is not necessarily as dry as it could be or should be for any other type of fire. But as you can see, with the design of this firebox or this fire tower, it is drawing air very well. And that's the, po the whole point of a rocket stove is that it will draw air, and air and combine a lot of air with the fuel and create a very solid, very clean combustion once it gets going. I know it's smoking right now, but once it really gets going. So now you can see the flames extending above quite forcefully, uh, six, seven inches above the top of the stove here. So one of the things I've noticed is that the fact that the sides of the fire tower are slanted inward does two things. First, it gives me a much bigger fire box in the bottom where the grate is, and it forces the flames towards the top with the slant of the sides and actually creates even more airflow as a result. So, yep, it's well engaged now. I'm looking down inside. I see quite a bit of flame coming up. Enough for me able to put a pot of water on top to make some lunch. So let me grab my water and we'll do exactly that. All right, just before I put my pot of water on top, I thought I'd give you a down, top-down uh, look at it. You can see there's almost a vortex taking place in there. There's a lot of air rushing in through the bottom of the stove and feeding upwards through the fuel and creating a good column of flame. All right, now I'll reposition the camera. We'll put the pot on. I always like doing this as a bit of a test to see how, uh, if any, dampening takes place. So the pot I'm putting on is full of cold water. All right, I'm impressed with that right off of the top. Because there's so much airflow around the top with the pot stands as well as the holes on all four sides around it, um, there's very little dampening. The water in this pot is cold and it is covered with creosote from previous use. And often on a lot of small stoves, when you put it on, the fact that the water is cold inside dampens or cools down the internal combustion temperature of the stove and you get a lot of smoke being generated. I'm not seeing anything, anything that wasn't there prior to me putting the pot on. As you can see, it just gets, seems to be getting more and more intense with each passing moment. I wonder if I can start feeding fuel down inside yet. Sure, why not? A couple pieces in. Maybe something a little bit longer here just to demonstrate that. There we go. Let me draw the camera back a little bit so you can see the longer sticks that I've put down inside the feed ramp. They're now into the center of the feed ramp where they're in the center of the combustion area. And they'll catch on in a moment's time. I can I'm not going to feed any more in at the moment, but I'm just going to use another stick to push them down as they are consumed. All right, so fair demonstration of how this stove lights up so well, how well it draws air, creates a good, strong column of flame. Very little smoke. Uh, well, of course, there was some dampness to the wood, and it is a lot of it is softwood, so there is some smoke going to be generated by that. But still, very clean burning stove by um, most measurements. I think what I'll do now is uh, 
make myself some lunch with this and then we'll talk a little bit more about the stove design. All right, let's wrap this video up. A few more comments on the Fire Tower by Arnaud. What I really like about it is the performance. It works so well. It draws air in so well from the bottom that with that preload and being lit from the bottom, it wasn't long before I had a very hot, very tall column of flame coming up through this, enough to bring my water to a boil very quickly. It works very cleanly as well. Now there was a little bit of smoke and that's probably in part due to the fact that I wasn't using the driest wood as well as it was softwood, but just the same, it was very, very clean. And the design is such that it wasn't dampened down at all by putting a pot on top. And then what I liked of course is once the preload of fuel started to burn down, I could feed in longer, bigger sticks in through the feed ramp on the side, keep the fire going and sustain it for as long as I need to. Again, controlling just how much heat I want it by how many sticks I put in or how far in I put them or the size of them, those types of things. Uh, the other thing th about this is that it seems to retain heat very well. And now I know part is that it's heavy stainless steel construction, but also the design of the firebox holds the heat down inside quite well. So what I found is as coals uh, or the fire, uh, the preload of fuel and the fuel itself started to burn down to coals, if I put in a few more sticks, they combust it very quickly and reinvigorated the stove quite strongly. And I'm sure that has to do with not only the maximum airflow, but the heat that's being trapped inside of the combustion area itself. The other thing I found is just as I picked the stove up after letting it cool off was that there was only powder, literally just powder of ash being left in, in the stove afterwards. And that again is another good sign of complete combustion taking place. So again, a very well fu uh, designed functioning stove. Now, there are a few things about it that do need improvement. And some of the things I'm going to mention, I have discussed with Arnaud and these will be upgrades or second generation in the next production run. And one of them is right off of the top, I think I mentioned it already. And that is this part Part of the feed ramp, the one that holds the wood off of the floor, allowing for air to come in underneath. That little wire or uh, pin that runs through here, sometimes it will just slide over and drop out. And then it can be a little hard to get back in. Not in the when you first install it, but as it's operating, because as you saw, it's meant to slide into the floor or the fire pan inside of the box. So if it fall, pulls back, like if you put a piece of wood in and slightly pulled it back and it fell out, you'd have a bit of a challenge getting it back in. So the fix will be that the fire pin itself or the pin running through here will be a little longer and it will seat a little deeper, allowing it to go further into the box and less chance of it falling out. The other thing was on the ash or not the fire grate itself, those little hooks on it, I think they need to be a little bit longer so that they grab the lip down here on the underneath the uh, the feed port so that they're less likely to drop down. Now again, it's still not much of an issue because it does not like it drops down and right out of the stove and causes a problem. It's just that if you want it to be hooked on the way it's intended to be, that I think that they need to be a little longer. Warping, I, I really no warping to the body itself except for that little bar down here. And as I mentioned, you can push that back into shape very, very quickly. So not a lot of things about the stove that need to be improved. They're just tiny, I think, tweaks or slight modifications that can occur in a future production run. By the way, speaking of future, future, future production runs, I asked Arnaud if there was a possibility of a titanium version of this coming out at some point in the future. And the answer is, there's a possibility. Uh, he was being a little bit vague. Of course, you have to get your production up and running and have see this design well worked out before you take it to the next step. So yes, he, our node is considering a titanium version of this stove, which I think would be just amazing in terms of it would have all this functionality, but with that great weight re, uh, savings to go along with it. Okay. I've given you all the information I have and shown you how this stove operates. I will be putting all the information, the specifications, and the links to where you can take a closer look at this stove in the video description, as always, of course. And I would invite you, if you have any comments or questions about the fire tower, then please put those in the comments section. Okay, until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.